Hello, sister friends. It's so good to see you all. I see the chat is chatting. If you can hear me okay, and you can see me okay, give me a thumbs up or a smiley face or something in the chat to let me know. There's a slight delay from when I talk and what I see on my screen from when you respond. So I'll pause. Hi. I don't know how long I can stay. The chapters on marriage are in order. Still talking to each other. Okay. Okay. Hey, Jenny. Does that mean you see me, Dee Dee? Yeah? Maybe? Hopefully it's working. Yes. Thumbs up. Okay. Fantastic. Hello. Hello, Heather. Hello, Hypercactus. Hello, Lynn Vaughn. Hello, Dee Dee. Hello, Louise. Tracy and Travis, hello. HP, hello. Cappy, kind, hello. Becky, did I say hello to you already? I'm not sure. If not, hello, Becky. Hello, Gabrielle. Um, Lori, of course, hello, and thank you for moderating for me. I appreciate that because I cannot keep my eye on the chat. Okay, Linda Kohler, hello, Beth Mortley, good to see you. Laura, hello, Mama Squirrel, good to see you again. April Stearns, hi, hi, hi. All right, Whiskey River, good to see you. You caught the beginning, yes, you did. It's got to be early for you in Alaska, huh? That because I think you're a, well, depending on the time change, you don't do time change, right? Is that if, if I remember correctly? I had relatives that lived in Alaska for a while. So I feel like sometimes it's three hours difference and sometimes it's four hour difference from the East Coast, if I recall correctly. What time is it in Alaska? That's what I'm going to ask you, Whiskey River. You let me know. All right. Hi, Ruth Carroll. Good to see you. Lots of people joining in right now. That's so exciting. Today we are doing chapter three, which I'm guessing is going to be Christine because we did Mary and Janelle. So I'm thinking we're going in wife order. All right, Lynn Vaughn, hello, Mace Chill, good to see you. I'm glad you made it. Let me pull some of my notes for other things out of this book. And before we get started, um, Alyssa, I don't see you here in the chat right now, but let me put this out publicly in case you watch this later, Alyssa1704. Thank you very much for the incredibly generous super thanks that you put in one of my videos. I can't remember which one it was, but um, that was very kind. And bought myself a chair. Told you any super chats or super thanks or anything that comes my way, um, I dedicate to this channel in one way or another. So we got the microphone, we got the mic arm, we now have a chair. I don't know if you guys noticed or not, but the chair I had before, I don't know, we've probably had it for 25, 35 years. I don't know how long we've had it. Um, but it would make this loud creaking sound and I would like tilt to the left. <laughs> Every now and then it would tilt to the right, but I think that's because sometimes instead of tilting it back and making a loud noise, I just sit with it tilted left and try to accommodate. And then as I turn, it like tilts back. So it's like this ever tilting chair, which is very funny because when I do my speech therapy classes in it, my kids are always like, everything okay? I'm like, I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm fine. I always tease them. I'm like, if I ever disappear out of screen, fear not. But if I don't come back within five or 10 minutes, something's gone awry. <laughs> Contact the head of Ohio Virtual Academy where I do my speech therapy sessions through. All right. Um, all right. Becky, her voice is so soothing. It sounds like being being read a bedtime story. Well, now, how sweet is that? Very good. I appreciate that. Um, I will say, somebody else said that I should do ASMR and just read things to go to sleep. It, this could be a compliment. This could not. But sometimes I will go back and try to critique myself. But I watch everything YouTube either while I'm eating a meal or when I'm going to bed at night. So I'll put it on and I, it puts me right to sleep. <laughs> Which I guess to some people would be an insult, but <laughs> so I have to go back and rewatch and go back and rewatch it. Spotlight on stigma, you're a former special ed teacher. Oh, you love SLPs, thank you. Thank you very much. I am now just an online SLP. 
All right, which is um, a real easy gig compared to what it's like to work in the schools. I did many years working in the schools. The caseload's incredible, the workload's incredible, the hours and hours and hours of work you bring home every week unpaid is incredible. So um, I feel very blessed to have a good gig going on right now. All right. All right. Looking forward to sister time. Yes. Very good. Sorry, Godmother. All right. So Christine and Cody. Um, I will say very much looking forward to reading about Christine because I like her. Yeah, like her. What can I say? Hi, Joanna Dunwich. I'm glad you're here. Um, and I know a lot of people don't, and I don't. I know that the the high energy <laughs> that she has can get annoying. I get it. It gets on my nerves sometimes too. It really does. But after all these years, you got to realize she's up there all the time. So it's worse if somebody is down here and then all of a sudden is like really and then they're like back down here again that annoys me more with her there's an expectation that we are going to be as her kids describe her like at party level all the time so but that's not what made me really like her it was really season one episode one when you could tell how distraught she was about robin coming into the family and nobody really listening that's what made me love her and go oh this poor woman how's this gonna turn out who knew 14 years later here we are crazy all right you have a feeling it's gonna be a sad chapter is it really gonna be a sad chapter is this the chapter with the nachos in the car christine is your favorite too Didi. i'm gonna grab a tissue talk amongst yourselves for two seconds i'm sorry i'm gonna go out of the screen for a second Okay, just allergies. Don't know what kind. Just a constant runny nose. All right, well, I am excited about this. Very, very excited. So we'll see how it goes. Hopefully we don't get too depressed. All right. I miss doing all my Christine speak, or yeah, I think I called it Christine Speaks. Christine Speaks series. Those were fun. I need Christine or Janelle. Oh, wouldn't that be great if we had Jan a Janelle Speaks series and Janelle did more talking? I have to follow her Instagram more. I, she's not going to be talking for a while. So um, that's not going to be, that's not going to be something we're going to be able to do for a while. But um, I really enjoyed doing the Christine Speaks ones and, and, from your comments, I think you enjoyed them too. But I finished the interview, so that's it. I mean, we still have Cody Brown stuff to get through. <laughs> if we just want to poke fun and laugh, I do have plenty more videos still coming out. I just need to catch up on that. Uh, maybe after Easter. And um, and then again, I, I have a... Maybe I'll put it all together in one. I don't know. I had a couple little things from McKelty's... Um, um, Patreon when she because she's going through this series I did find out that McKelty has watched season one already completely all the way through and she's watched season 18 which we knew because I believe that's when she started her Patreon was season 18 so and then she would respond to the episodes the in-between stuff she said is hit and miss all right um let's see here uh, I saw the photos. McKelty says the family is mad that they're out, but the National Guard posts all funeral photos. So yeah, yeah, you're absolutely right. She mentioned that in uh, the Patreon last night um, and said that they weren't aware that that's what the National Guard does. And the National Guard does it because they were getting a lot of slack for having private funerals. Kind of silly. Um, and I guess it's people thought they were hiding the fact that men were dying, like maybe in the service, like at, like serving the country. I, I, that's the only connection I can make. Cause like, why would people be upset 
that we're not airing the funerals or sharing information about it. So anyway, they used to be completely private. This family didn't know that they went public. And um, so they were disappointed. But she said she wasn't really disappointed at the National Guard. She's like, that's their policy. They just didn't know. What she's the most heard about are... From what she heard, she said she didn't look, but there's a, a, a YouTuber who had been posting a lot of the pictures and commenting, and I don't know what the comments are, I didn't watch the videos, but um, was just upset that, you know, they make a whole nother video and, in her opinion, create a lot of nonsense and non-truths um, to promote the channel. So she was upset about that. Um, specifically so um, don't know don't follow that youtuber so I don't know the details about it but it was clear that McKelty and the family are not happy with this particular youtuber for sure all right um, let's see here yay for sister time Beth hello thank you for the super chat I appreciate you and the cute little pictures that come along with it fifth super chat on a live stream with cute little number five there thank you very much i appreciate it i said that it was going to go to a pop filter or or my super chat money what it's going to go to next because i just don't want you guys to think you're randomly sending money for anything and again nobody has to send any money but um when you do i use it and for those of you who are new i got myself a new chair i got it through marketplace mm -hmm. i am a thrifty shopper <laughs> Although it's brand new. It was in the box. Somebody got it at like one of those bin stores and then changed their mind. So I don't know. They probably made a little bit off of me. But I looked at the chair um, online and I got it for half the price that it's being sold for online. So I am happy. So and I'm very happy that my chair is not going to go wobbling back and forth anymore. My old um, antique chair that I had before. So thank you all very much. And then I think the next thing I will be saving up for is a shock absorber on this mic so that when I do touch the mic and the uh, arm because I talk with my hands like crazy as you all know um, that it um, it's it's not so annoying that it'll save it from making the really loud noise it used to be much worse with the other arm I had it's, it's definitely way better now but I can make it even better so I will okay Jenny, it's yours. You owe no explanation. That Thank you very much, Lori. But I feel like I do. I just want you to know that I, I, I know, I know. But I want it like it's sort of like my giving back because all I can do is say thank you. Um, so it makes sense that if you give me something, I give you something back that's going to make these videos or this whole process better for you to watch or to see. Someday I'll get another camera, not my computer camera. So... Um, I'll look better um, on camera too. In the meantime, you get what you get. <laughs> this is what it looks like. No filter. <laughs> All right. All right. We are going to start with chapter three. Christine and Cody. Here we go. All right. Christine says, I was raised in a polygamous family just outside of Salt Lake. My grandfather was the head of our church, which means my family has been closely involved with all aspects of our faith since I can remember. You could say that when it comes to our church, I'm connected. True. Hey, did you see what was the name of that series on Hulu? about her um, grandfather's death. I mean, it's not about that, but it's about the... Oh, shoot, I can't even think of the names of them. Um, Mace Chill, Jenny. James on my take on reality said he would collab with you. <gasps> Any day, he rocks. Any one of them. He rocks. Amanda. There's two Amandas to do. There's another Amanda that was the Barbie... Um, and now she has Amanda, which is confusing to me because when I think of Amanda, I think of the comedian Amanda that collabs with James and um, Sarah. Um, but James, Sarah, Amanda, they're all amazing. And I'm sure the Barbie one is too. I don't watch any channels where I can't see a face. I'm sorry. Slightly ADD. 
<laughs> even though half the time I'm not even looking at the screen. I don't know what it is. I guess when I hear something funny or I, I, I like to go back and rewind and watch their reactions to things. So, um, yeah. All right. That would be so much fun, Jenny and James. We could have a show called Jenny and James. <laughs> yes, he's awesome. Okay. So, okay, what was the name of that show? Let me think. Do you guys remember the name of it? it it's on Hulu. I think it's been out for a little bit, but I've just seen it recently. And it's about um, the the polygamous family that moved to Mexico and um, he he was the brother of um, Christine's grandfather who also was the head of the church here and then he got really power hungry down in Mexico and he came and they killed um, and assassinated um, Christine's uh, grandfather who was like a holistic medicine healing doctor, and they walked right into his office and shot him right there, patients. And I mean, it was just crazy. I mean, the whole thing is amazing. If any of you are a Dateline 2020 60 Minute kind of people, you're going to absolutely love this. It's on Hulu. It's a documentary. It's probably f maybe five episodes long. And they interview all of these kids at the time who were just witnessing all of this and what it was like. Mm. All right, Daughters of the Cult, that could be, it does have cult in the name. I bet it is da Daughters of the Cult because almost all the da daughters are the ones talking. I bet that's it. I highly recommend it. Anyway, you see Christine's grandfather being reenact, you know, replayed, reenacted in this and the whole history of their family and his brother and the murders and the I mean it was insane crazy insane whiskey river said it's da daughters of the cult too yeah yeah did you guys like that I liked it you know what can I just say <laughs> I need a t-shirt that says can I just say I do that all the time I didn't know I did it until I started editing my videos I'm like again Jenny really again um I I know from when my daughter worked in television ratings that the demographic for these crime dramas are women ages 30 to 55 or something like that. It's I, I can't remember the exact um, age grouping, but it's like right in there that like basically housewives, you know, they are loving it. Hello, Belinda. Good to see you. Um, and so I thought, oh, good. Because I thought I was crazy because I am a Dateline 2020 20, 60 minutes 48 hour addict I love all of them especially if I find them and now I found some channel on YouTube that does them too it's like about an hour and hour and 20 minutes long and then they have two episodes um and I'm finding some new stories in there too I I and then I started feeling guilty that I enjoy this but I will say I do not, uh, Mrs. Alicia, hello. Um, I do not enjoy if there's any torture on any of these shows, any abuse, um, especially if there's childhood abuse, but any women abuse, any torture, I completely turn it off. I like to watch the show that like in the murder already happened and they're investigating it or it's just like a pop with a gun and then it's over. And then the whole show is solving it that's what I like all right Mace Chill you watch them all too and Forensic Files everyone watches Forensic Files I gotta I gotta I gotta get my um what is that what is the name of that channel I need to like earmark it in my um television I'm so far behind on watching everything <laughs> like I need another thing to watch anyway Let's go on. It made me think of that as I was, as Christine mentioned her grandfather. I'm like, I know your grandfather and the whole story that goes along with it. Okay. Although I was raised polygamous, it wasn't until I was 17 that I decided without a doubt that I was going to accept the principle of plural marriage. It took me a while to come to this decision. I reflected and prayed and turned inward until I had my answer. Eventually, I developed a strong testimony about the way I wanted to live my life. 
The biggest influence on my decision to live the principle of plural marriage was my grandmother. She loved having sister wives and knew what the strongest relationship in her marriage was with them. When I decided that I was going to enter into a plural marriage, I knew it would be only as a third wife. Even as a teenager, I was certain this was the path for me. Did you guys see my video on that? On how I believe Christine equaled third wife equals last wife? I can't remember the name of the video, but I... I talked about it and it was spurred on by stuff that McKelty so it's in my McKelty speak series so that's why I think she wanted to be the third I, I mean I think this in this book she's talked about it too explaining why the third um, and she's never said because I'd be the last one but I think deep down inside she thought um, she would be the last one all right Joanna, you watch true, true crime shows with your mom growing up, and now your daughter's going to college for forensic science. Good for her. I mean, it's got to be a good career to go into any of the sciences, right? All right. Hello, Ireland. Oh, somebody's coming from Ireland. I'm missing part of the chat as it's going by. I just glance up there. Whoever is there from Ireland, hello. Top of the morning. Is that is that Irish? <laughs> All right. I'm not going to embarrass myself. Let me go on. All right. I understand how many people might think this is a strange preference. Why would I want to come third when I could come first? But when you think about it, if you are as committed to plural framage at, at a young age as I was, you're less interested in the monogamous stage of the relationship than in the plural stage. I wanted sister wives as much as I wanted a husband. I mean, I would too if I married Cody. <laughs> Just got to say. <laughs> ah, Joanna Christine was so naive. Bless her heart. I know if she only knew where it was going to go. All right. Oh, Mama Squirrel. Good point. Christine would have been the last wife if Cody would not have had a midlife crisis. Excuse me as I blow my nose. Okay. Christine goes on to say, it is a common misconception, at least in my worldview. Sorry, I just want to make sure it was recording. That it's best to enter a family as first wife. People often think, incorrectly, that the first wife has the highest status and the most security. I never saw it this way. In fact, in my opinion, being the first wife takes too much work and involves too much self-sacrifice. You have to give up your your life entirely and be joined at the hip to your husband. It's just you and your husband until the day he marries a second wife. Yeah, that's a good thing, no? <laughs> this kind of single-minded devotion never appealed to me. I'm independent and I like my freedom. Just recently heard her make a comment about that and say that she believed that she would have a lot more independence as a plural wife because she was on her own a lot. But she didn't realize until she got married to, um, to, um, I have not been drinking today. I had such a long day. I got up so early and I didn't sleep well last night. Okay. Um, anyway, her current husband, um, she realized after she married him, she actually has a lot more independence now than she ever did when she lived in polygamy, which I believe, which makes sense. You find the right guy. All right. Jenny, Thursday at 730 Benadryl. I know. Sure seems like it, doesn't it? And I am not drinking alcohol because I knew how tired I was today and I didn't want to fall asleep in front of y'all. All right test your chat is missing mary hit a refresh that seems to work for people okay while we're talking about chat for a minute when i said the chat two weeks ago didn't post i didn't realize i learn something every week with youtube and obs and streaming and everything we're gonna get this down by <laughs> six months from now i learn something new every week what i learned was the chat was there but it doesn't show up for 24 hours. So it gets posted 
right away. Um, I might afterwards actually just put it on private so it doesn't post right away to give it a chance for the chat to, I'm thinking they probably have a filter that goes through to make sure nothing horrible is in the chat. That's my guess. Um, And then maybe, so after all of you live have no commercials and you'll have the chat here. And then when it gets posted, I think I'll move it to private right away. And then 24 hours later, so in the evening on Fridays, I'll post it when I see the chat is connected to it. But then it's also going to have commercials too. So encourage you all to come live. All right. It shouldn't have commercials. I did set it up differently this time. Another thing that I learned to make it work properly. And it seems to be going smoothly. All right, let me look really quickly before I start reading. Um, One is missing. Sure, I did something wrong. Um, uh, Okay, you're all having a conversation. Not sure what we're talking about. That's okay. I'm going to go back. David. Thank you, Becky. David. David. My son's middle name. I should remember David. Okay. Um, I was going to say something else, but we'll move on. Okay. Um, Being the second wife didn't sound like a better option either. In fact, I think that would have been worse than being the first wife. The second wife has the hardest job and is put in the most uncomfortable position because she's the one who comes along and disrupts the marriage of the first wife and her husband. I I agree with that. Yeah, I can see that. You can't blame her. It's not the second wife's fault. It's just the nature of her role. She's the wedge that comes between the couple. And I was never going to put myself in that position. No matter how fair and understanding the first wife is, there is no way to avoid the emotional struggles and heartache when a second wife joins a family. But the third wife, she's the lucky one. (laughs) I mean, depends on how you look at it. Okay. (laughs) God bless her. She's the one who comes along and makes peace between the first two wives. Third wife is a blessed position. She doesn't have to face marriage on her own without the help from sister wives or bear the burden of breaking up a previously monogamous couple. I was going to be a third wife all the way. Yeah. Hmm. Sam, thank you. I'm learning and growing. Isn't that the truth? You're never too old. Never too old to teach a dog new tricks. Still learning. Every single week, I am learning. This is going to be awesome come September when it starts again. Oh, let me spill some tea. This is a video I was going to put out for you guys. Now, McKelty made a comment, and I said this on a live chat, maybe the first live chat, maybe the second live chat, I don't know, but a long time ago, like maybe a month ago, right at the beginning of live chats, um, there was a comment by McKelty who just in passing said something about, I don't remember the whole details of it, but she just basically said, there's two launches of Sister Wives, one in the spring and one in the fall. And I thought, oh, that's interesting. I don't remember that. But I honestly never paid attention. My DVR is set to record anytime Sister Wives is on. So I don't normally know. I mean, now I know exactly when it's on because I take notes and try as quickly as I can to get a reaction video out. But before, didn't matter to me because... Until about this season, I wasn't even watching response videos on YouTube or anything. I was was just, it was another one of the shows that was a must-see, can't miss, love Sister Wives. And yeah, I just wasn't on YouTube in general. Just life was crazy and busy. So then, um, so when McKelty said that, I'm like, ah, that must have been how they used to do it. Two short seasons instead of one longer season. Didn't think anything else about it. Then, I think it was last week. She did another video and she implied that there might be something in the spring. And I 
think it may have been in relation to Gwendolyn and when that was going to air and it was something along that line. So she kind of implied again about it. And then yesterday she said, um, basically it's coming out in the spring. It's coming. She said, we are not allowed to talk about it. Because somebody came right out and said, when is it going to be? Is it going to be in the spring or is it going to be in the fall? She goes, we're not allowed to say. But all I'll say, because I I think they specifically said, is it coming out in the spring? She's like, yeah, we don't, we're not allowed to say any specifics about anything. But I'll just say, okay. I said nothing. That's what she said. So, of course, then in the chat, it was the only chat I caught live. I just happened to be, anyway, it doesn't matter, but I caught it live. I normally just see her rewatches. When you watch the rewatches, I don't see, because I watch them on Patreon. I don't know if I can see if on YouTube the chat's there or not, but on Patreon there's no chat. So I've never seen the chats. I've always just watched what she said and not paid attention in the chat. But because it was live, I went on YouTube and I saw the chat. And so then everyone's like, I'll take that as a yes. And, and she reads everything, every single, I don't, they're, she, they're amazing. They're very long um, Patreons because um, she reads a lot. Although she doesn't have a whole lot of subscribers. I was surprised. I just assumed that she would like have as many as me at least, if not double. Um But then it's free for you all. (laughs) You have to pay for her. So I get it. (laughs) Um, So yeah, in terms of who was actually there live, she, you know, it goes slow enough that she's able to read through and and answer every question that people had. So I should do that. If you ever have any questions you really want me to ask her, let me know. And I'll see if I can slide them in and ask her in the chat if I catch another live with her. Okay. Okay. I've completely lost my mind, but I wanted to share that juice with you to know that in the next couple of months, we got sister wives coming back. Could be because of Gwendolyn's wedding, and it could also be based on the recent circumstances with Garrison. I feel like this is another situation. First, we had Christine leaving. We had Christine's marriage. We had um, Garrison's passing. We have these situations that are timely and to release them two years later, like people don't care anymore. I don't know what TLC's problem is. But with the wedding, they were able to turn it right around. So clearly, they can get things out quicker. So that might be what they're doing, is they are going to do a short season now. Or maybe they'll just do Gwendolyn's wedding and something else. I don't know. But something's coming from Sister Wives in the next couple of months. We don't have to wait until September this year or August, or October, or whenever it was that it launched uh, last year. All right, give me a second. Let me see. Um, Mace Chill, your question for McKelty. Does she really like Robin, or just trying to stay in her dad's good graces? Good question. I'll tell you right now, she's not going to answer it. She's going to say, of course I like her, and I want to stay in my dad's good graces. There's a whole bunch of questions that I would never even venture to give to her because I know she's going to take the political down the aisle answer on them. Um, But every now and then she doesn't. But that kind of stuff. More specific things like on this day or on this episode, what did you think? Or during this time, what did you feel? That kind of stuff she'll say. But the general, what do you think of your dad? And Robin is always positive. Or at least neutral. It's not negative. Okay. There's a second wife. The third wife's the lucky one. Mm -mm. Okay. Around my 19th birthday, my sister Wendy went on a survival trek with our church. Oh, that sounds miserable. I don't know why people, um, I, I don't know. Oh. <sighs> Outdoorsy people, God bless you. I mean, I love to go for a walk in the woods or something like that, but survival track does not sound like a good time. No, I just, I'll stay home in the comfort of my own bed. Okay. 
So that was her sister, Wendy. The leaders of her group were a newlywed couple, Mary and Cody Brown. <laughs> hmm, Mary on a survival track. I can see Janelle doing it. She's a wilderness gal. That's interesting. Robin would have never made it, right? Never in a million years. Uh, when they went camping, didn't she get a hotel room even? I, I really need to do a rewatch. I say that every week, don't I? Every week I see about one more episode than I saw before. It's going to take me forever to catch up. But it's that early stuff I've forgotten. Okay. When Wendy returned from her adventure, all she could talk about was Cody, 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 Cody. She was full of stories about how strong and athletic Cody was. Cody pulled us all up a hill, she said. He threw us over a wall one by one. I don't know why this bothers me. Wendy explained that Cody and Mary were new to our group, which is why I'd never heard of them before. As it turns out, Mary had been a member for years. She'd even been over my house on several occasions, but no one had noticed her until she married Cody. She wasn't kidding. Christine confirms that Mary had been in her church for years and nobody noticed her. They're not big churches, people. These are little churches, little private, everybody knows everybody churches. And nobody knew Mary until then. Wow. I don't even know how that's possible. I used to go to a very small church and, I mean, yeah, they're shy and quiet people, but you know who they are. Just say hi, even if they don't talk to you or you don't talk to them. I don't know. I don't know. Okay. Um, oh, was there a question about this? Is this why we're talking about this? Spotlight and Stigma said, at Mace, that purity speech makes me cringe every time I hear it. Yeah. Yeah. It's <laughs> makes me cringe, too. It's I'm so uncomfortable. And the worst part about that was poor Dayton, who's sitting there watching as she's talking about how horrible and she threw it away and all the stuff. And the result was Dayton. <laughs> like, poor kid. You were not wanted. It was a mistake. I threw away my purity. I made a huge... Uh, anyway, all right, let's go on. It's not what this book is about right now. <laughs> I digress. You guys are getting me off track. I'm blaming y'all. Okay. So they went on this adventure track. She came home. Wendy's talking all about Cody and how lovely he is. Wendy explained that Cody and Mary were new to her group, which I'd never... Okay, this I read that. Okay, nobody knew who Mary was and she didn't know. Wow. The next day, I went to church with Wendy. The hall was crowded. I was checking out the crowd with my... When my eyes landed on a handsome young man, without my sister telling me, I knew he was Cody. I thought, wow, Wendy forgot to mention how cute Cody is. He, he's really, really cute. (laughs) Okay, I'm not going to argue with that. I mean, it gives me cringes right now because he's so skizzy, scuzzy, scoozy, creepy, creepy right now. Everything about him, from his looks to his personality to his speech, everything is is yuck. But in photographs, without seeing the personality and all that, I think when he was young, in his late teens and early 20s, he was a good-looking guy. Short cut hair, almost military kind of buzz cut up the side. Now I don't know what he's trying to do. He tried to like channel his inner surfer dude and it's gone awry for decades it's gone awry okay all right um let's see here okay let me continue the next day oh she said she went to church okay cody is now going to talk okay Are you trying to tell us you don't like Cody much? (laughs) It doesn't show. I'm really trying to keep it in. (laughs) 
try to keep my bias to myself. Ick. Okay. I have to admit, I don't remember seeing Christine in church that morning. I had been in the church for only six months, so the group was fairly new to me. There were different faces at church each week, which made it difficult for me to remember everyone I met. Well, how can that be? There can't be that many people that are in this little AUB. We want to be part of polygamous church. I don't know. That's just his excuse for not being able to remember people, I think. A week after I returned from the survival trek, our church held a dance. Of course I dance. <laughs> we never bowl. We never go tobogganing. We never go for walks in the park. No, we just have dances. All right. Sorry, I digress. Of course I attended with my new wife, Mary. Although I'd met Janelle once or twice, we were only casual acquaintances at this point. But there was one girl who caught my eye. Christine. She was wearing a turquoise dress with a lace ruffle at the collar. She was bubbly and sweet and as cute as anyone I had ever seen before. Oh, this is unbelievable. These are his words. She was also overflowing with positivity. Well, that's true. That's Christine. Her liveliness and good cheer were infectious. I get that too. I think that if you hung out with Christine for a day that there wouldn't be a whole lot of downer conversation. It would be pretty up. However, I was still a newlywed and new to the polygamous faith. Although I thought Christine was really cute, I wasn't yet ready to consider a second wife. So he thought she was really cute, but he wasn't attracted to her. How can you think somebody's cute but not be attracted? Isn't that what attraction is? Like, because everything is superficial in his world, isn't it? Remember he said he was never attracted to her? Okay, just saying. I don't know this, but Christine had a crush on another boy. Oh, I didn't. I'm sorry. Hold on. Let me take a drink. Here we go. I didn't know this, but Christine had a crush on another boy that night. She was just 19, and she was a romantic, but there was an undeniable spark between us. When I looked at her, I had a feeling, call it a sixth sense, that our destinies were interlaced. I just, I don't know, the lies. Oh, the lies. Yeah, yeah, Mace Chill. He's lying. He likes her. He wanted her. I think so, too. Mm Mm-hmm. All right. Let's see. Becky. Janelle was his sister-in-law, but he didn't know her. Oh, that's a good point. Well, look at the whole timeline of it. It said in here, Janelle and her and, and Mary's brother were only married for six months when he left. So by the time... By the time he married Mary, wasn't she already divorced? Oh, see, I've forgotten all the little details now. Remind me, wasn't she divorced already from Mary's brother before, yes, before Mary married Cody? Because there was that awkward thing where Janelle and Mary's brother were both at the wedding, but they were separated at the time. And I was curious what that kind of looked like. Um, So back when... But she was at the wedding. I don't know. It's all lies. It's all lies. All right. Yeah. Good, Joanna. Good point. Let's put her waiting boots on. It's getting deep. It just doesn't make sense. If you tried to chart it all out, it would just be all over the place. It would make no sense. Mary and I didn't have any newlywed friends. And since we didn't have any children and Mary wasn't pregnant, we spent most of our time with single people our age. We always had a group at our house eating ice cream and hanging out. Christine had a big circle of friends. That doesn't surprise me. And she would always seem to be in our mists, midst. And since Christine's family was so involved in our church, they regularly hosted gatherings to which Mary and I were usually invited. Mm-hmm. 
while I had an inkling that perhaps something important was starting to develop with Christine, I was awed with how adorable and upbeat she was. Okay, this is still before his connection with Janelle. So he was like interested in Janelle and Christine at the same time? He just said he barely knew Janelle at this time. But he already was, I didn't realize that he was pining after Christine so early on, especially since he said he never was. <laughs> I was awed with how adorable and upbeat she was. Mary and I weren't yet looking to add to our family. We were newlyweds and still very much a couple in love. Boy, he really doubles down on how much he loved Mary, doesn't he? For saying he never loved her. Mm. This made it difficult for me to hang out with my buddies because I would, it would mean leaving her alone. Eventually, Christine and Mary became friends, which was great. But when I started to notice that Christine was growing interested in me, and when I started visualizing a future together, I knew that exploring this would be unfair to Mary at this point. Well, Christine wasn't interested in getting together with you now. She wanted to be the third wife, so no worries. If Christine and I started hanging out alone, in essence, if we were to start courting, Mary would be abandoned by her two closest friends. Did Mary have no friends? They all did all these single friends would come over and hang out and that, and she still didn't acquire any friends during this time? Why would she have to be alone? Christine was her only friend? I don't know. And did she not like Janelle at all because of the divorce with her uh, brother? Because you would have th thought Mary and Janelle would have developed a closer relationship. All right. Do, 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 do. All right. I just glance up and I see a comment and then click it. <laughs> I don't believe one word in their freaking book. Yeah. We're reading it anyway. <laughs> Shits and giggles. <laughs> But it's hard. Yeah, it's hard to wade through this and know what's true and what's not. Okay. Mm. Makes me wonder also. <laughs> Squirrel. Makes me wonder also about that book that the catfisher wrote about Mary. From what I heard, it, it's all BS and made up because it's this hypothetical relationship that they had, like in-person relationship that they had, which never happened because Catfisher was a female and Mary's not into females. She thought he was a man the whole time. Um, however, apparently the whole ring gate thing was in the book. And there's a whole bunch of stuff in there that the person said Mary said. So then I start to think, well, what else did they say that Mary said in the book? Is there anything else good? Probably not. It had probably been all over social media by now. All right. I'm thinking out loud. <laughs> I'll go back to the book. <laughs> okay. That meant leaving her alone. Um, if I were to start dating Christine... Or it's interesting how he qualifies this though, right? It says, if Christine and I started hanging out alone in a line, in essence, if we were to start courting, whereas we know from the past that he was hanging out alone with Janelle, expressing an interest and in, in dropping little jokes about what it would be like if she, I mean, implying I'm into you, I want you in our marriage without Mary there inappropriate inappropriate against the church he says right here if they were to be alone it would mean they were starting courting mm -mm. okay mary had inadvertently made it clear to me on several occasions <laughs> inadvertently several times 
Okay, I'm sorry. Let me read the rest of the sentence. I don't even know what the rest of it says. <laughs> this just made me laugh. I'm sorry. I snorted. Okay. Mary had inadvertently made it clear to me on several occasions that she wasn't prepared to court Christine. You probably knew that. I think all of you have read this book. Not all of you. Some of you said you haven't read the book. Many of you have. That's a big line right there. On several occasions, she inadvertently... (laughs) It makes no sense. Let him know that she was not prepared to court Christine. Okay. Doesn't matter. Christine would have said no anyway. So it is what it is. All right. Okay. (laughs) Sorry, that made me laugh out loud. All right. I glance up and I only see like the last two comments because it's scrolling up in the thing. But Joanna, this made me laugh. Cody uses big words so he can sound more photosynthesis. (laughs) It's priceless right there. It's so true. (laughs) Okay, good joke. Love it. Okay. One weekend at a field day, For the younger members of our faith, I was busy being my loud, boisterous self. I was running all over the field that we were gathered at, hosting people, hosing, sorry, hosing, I wasn't expecting that word, hosing people down with water. How fun. Like, did they want to be hosed down with water? Loud, boisterous. Is that his way of saying obnoxious? that translation maybe Hmm. everybody was chasing me in order to pay me back but they couldn't catch me in the middle of all this I heard Christine cry out Cody my masculine man (laughs) I looked over at Mary and I could almost hear her growling this is priceless this chapter (laughs) I did not know any of this was in here. (sighs) Made Mary mad. Okay. Mary, who wants to be in a polygamous relationship. Mary, who grew up in polygamy. Made her growl. Okay. I hadn't seen many examples of plural marriage since I was new to the faith. So this was the first time I experienced it close up. But I couldn't blame her. We were very young. I don't think that has anything to do with it. If my husband started hosing down girls on a field and they started calling him their handsome man, I'd feel uncomfortable. Wouldn't like it. I mean, you can't blame Mary, except that Mary kept saying she wanted a polygamous relationship. I don't think she ever did. She loved Cody, and he loved her. That should have been the end of it right there. I mean, we wouldn't have this great series. We wouldn't have all these other great wives. And I mean, there's a lot of good that came out of it fantastic children all right but they really should have stopped right there okay um despite our initial resistance something was pulling us together i couldn't deny that christine would be part of my family someday but we all needed to grow up first okay Christine's section. All right. I loved Cody and Mary. And although my crush on Cody was getting serious, I wasn't interested in marriage yet. Still, I was always eager to hang out with them. Whenever my parents hosted a volleyball party, Mary and Cody always topped the guest list. After spirituality and faith, the trait my dad values most most is athleticism, so he was taken with Cody from the start. Whenever I talked to my dad about boys I was interested in, he always steered the conversation in the same direction. And how is Cody? He'd ask. Hmm. Co- that makes me a little bit sad because he was really steering the, you know, she loved her dad. Okay. Cody made a big splash when he joined our faith. He was nice looking, which impressed a lot of women, but he was also well-spoken and outspoken. Okay, well-spoken, I cannot agree with at all, but outspoken, gotcha. 
He was confident. That's what it is. You think he's well-spoken. He's just confident in what he says. If you really listen to the words, it's a bunch of BS. But confident, I'll give him. He was confident when he talked in front of a crowd. He knew how to take a spiritual concept and deliver it in a positive and inspiring way. He made a good impression on the people in charge of our church and was often called upon to speak at fireside meetings. About a year after I first met Cody and Mary, Cody organized a youth trip up to his parents' ranch in Wyoming. Cody wanted to expose his younger peers to his parents' lifestyle and introduce his parents to young people in their new faith. By this time, it was pretty clear that I had developed a serious crush on Cody. I was always hanging around Mary and him. So when we all piled in our caravan of cars to drive to my Wyoming, I got someone to drive my car and I made sure I rode in Cody's. Well, that had to have been obvious. How many people let somebody else drive their own car and then they ride in a different car? Uh-huh, okay. 19 people headed up to the ranch for the weekend. We set off from my house in Utah but when we hit the mountain pass, we drove into a massive snowstorm. It was unbelievably slow going, and we had to stop and take turns pushing one another's cars. Oh, how miserable. Did they not look at the forecast? Why would you put yourself in that situation? <sighs> Mother Jenny comes out. The drive should have taken half a day, but we wound up being on the road overnight because of the weather. Since we were all young, it was still fun being out there together. It felt like an adventure. Okay. Might take a drink. Uh, is the daddy's most concerned that they play sports, not that they're smart, honest, caring? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it was just the spiritual, what? A spiritual leader, a something else, and then athletic. Uh, oh, the abs, we swoon. <laughs> the confidence of a true ignorant fool. Right, Joanna? Uh, <laughs> the six pack abs won them over, indeed. It's a good point, Mama Squirrel. Other people make friends. Cody marries every woman who ever paid attention to him. So true. So true. Okay. Forecast with that. Yeah. Like plan ahead. Yeah. These are the people who like quit their jobs and just drove to another state. We'll figure something out when we get there. We have no income, but okay. Cody's part now. We drove all night to Wyoming. It was dangerous. Mary and I rode in the front seat and Christine sat in the back. I kept looking at Christine in the rearview mirror. For months I'd been watching her. I loved her spark, her bubbliness. How do you think Mary took the fact that she knew there was something flirty going on between Christine and Cody? She didn't like it. She snarled and growled about it. And yet on this trip, Somehow, Christine got someone to drive her car, and she's in the back seat with Mary and Cody. I bet she was icy cold. Christine probably got to be as bubbly as she wanted, because I bet Mary just shut down and didn't say anything. All right, he writes, she was so full of life and enthusiasm, just the perfect person to have along on a miserable drive. <laughs> next to Mary because Mary's miserable because she doesn't want Christine in the car okay yeah there's the weather too but in fact I was discovering that Christine was the kind of person I wanted to have around all the time she lit up every room and brought a fun positive energy to any event Mary often stood on the sidelines during games and group activities but Christine was always willing to participate in anything no matter how silly when we Set out on our road trip, I was convinced that Christine was the cutest girl in the world. Although she was a little chubby. Oh, there it is. I knew the chubby word was in this book. 
I was convinced. Who the F cares? Honest to goodness. The superficiality of men in polygamy shock me. It's that same thing if you're watching Soup. Seeking Sister Wives, and if you're not watching Seeking Sister Wives, let me tell you, you are missing out. Big time. I pr- oh my goodness. It's incredible. At least go to Reality TV Breakdown and watch my reviews. You won't get through more, a couple of them before. Oh, the last one I did? Mind-blowing. I have another review that I have to do. Is it on that show? Oh, no, I think it's Vanderpump Rules. All right. Um, oh, it's so good. It's so good. It's going to make Sister Wives seem tame. There you go. Mm-hmm. That's something to get us through until Sister Wives begins again. All right. So Christine was the cutest girl in the world, although she was a little chubby. Who cares? Back then, I was young and superficial enough to care about physical appearances. After we'd been, uh, what about the diesel jeans model comment you just made 14 years later? Back then you were superficial? Mm Mm-mm. Still are. After we'd been on the road all night, we stopped at a gas station. I'd been drinking soda pop to stay awake and my stomach felt sour and upset. Just thinking about food made me queasy. This is the the nacho scene right here? She was in the back seat with Cody and Mary. I did not know that. For the longest time, I thought this was a honeymoon because that's the only time they do road trips, right? <laughs> it's a honeymoon. I mean, when he actually takes the wives with them. Okay, this is all new to me. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm learning it as I'm going. Christine went into the Quickie Mart and bought herself what seemed like the largest portion of chili cheese nachos that I had ever seen. Oh, that sounds amazing. (laughs) Cody would not like me either. Mm -mm. The sight of those nachos turned my stomach. I couldn't watch her eat them. She must have been starving because she was eating so quickly that there was chili sauce and nacho cheese everywhere. That was so unnecessary, that line. There was no point to put that. Why did he have to say that? She must have been starving because she looked like a pig. Food all over her face. That rude. Rude. Don't like it. Looking back, I hate myself for the thoughts I had at that moment. But the sight of this chubby girl in my car devouring chili cheese nachos for breakfast put the brakes on our relationship. Okay. It brought out the most superficial and shallowest side of me. I still liked her. In fact, I liked her very much, but the nacho experience cooled my attraction a little. Well, a lot. She's in the back seat, bud. Why is he even watching her? This feels like a fabrication and an exaggeration of what really happened. This feels like he was trying to get at her big time because she didn't know this story until the book came out, right? From the episode when they did the talk back, she didn't know that that, he felt that way at all. There was no reason for him to write that. That's just hurtful. That's just full on hurtful. Oh, you don't like him at all. Neither do I. Mm. He was so cruel to Christine. Yeah, that. Yeah, Sam. Isn't that the truth? To put that in print for everybody to read and for her to not have read that until she read the book, it's downright vicious and cruel. And we know this book was written after Robin came around. So yeah, he didn't care anymore. Oh, mm. oh, Mace, you think Robin had something to do with it? Bum, bum, bum. <laughs> Conspiracy theories. 
throw them out there. <sighs> okay. Uh, Susan Joyce, Jenny, the whole protocol was the wife picks out the potential other wives. Cody was pulling a Joseph Smith. Okay, I don't know what that means, Cody was pulling a Joseph Smith. Does that mean he was trying to take the initiative to pick out the wife himself? And he was supposed to be submissive to Mary because Mary was supposed to pick out the wives and Mary clearly didn't pick out Christine, but he was interested in her. I don't know. That could be. But you're right, Scarlett. Good to see you, Scarlett. I'm glad you're here. Um, yeah, spiteful. How else do you put it? Spiteful. Mm -mm. Ridiculous. Christine's part. Of course, I had no idea I'd gross Cody out with my nachos. Okay, so she did know about it. I could have sworn she didn't know about this situation until she read it in the book. I'm learning a lot here with you people. I am getting everything straight in my head. I guess I have these pieces parts that I've heard over the years between the talkbacks and the episodes and just people chatting and putting it all together. So somehow she knew about the story. Let's find out how she knew about it. Okay. Of course I had no idea that I'd gross Cody out with my nachos. I was an overweight kid who liked junk food a little too much. And of all the junk foods in the world, chili cheese nachos were my favorite. I mean, yes. Is that really junk food? That's a meal. <laughs> Not junk food. <laughs> I call it dinner. You call it junk food. Tomato, tomato. <laughs> okay. When we finally got to the ranch, Cody transformed into a hero. He was a total stud. All the girls on the trip watched him. Okay. That's all she's saying about the nacho? Oh, I'm so confused now, people. So she knew that he was grossed out about it, but she said, of course, I had no idea that I'd gross Cody out. So like, did she write hers after reading his? And then she just left it at that. Of course, I had no idea I grossed him out. Let's move on because this was so hurtful. I'm not addressing it. Do they like get a chance to read what the other people write? Like, is there an order of writing and then they get to reflect and then somebody kind of edits it and puts it into different groups? Like they each write something, they each get to read the other person's and then they get to write one more thing and then somebody edits it and puts it in a logical progression or something like that. Let me see. Um, you believe Robin? Heather thinks that Robin led him to write that about Christine. That could be. Um, Lori, Cody. Oh, it means that Cody picked his own wives. Okay, yeah, so that was a Joseph Smith thing. It means he picked his own wives. Janelle said it herself. He picked all of them, which is not the way. Normally, the other wife picks them. Okay. Mm-hmm. Hmm. I'm just curious how and when Christine found out this story about the nachos. Maybe later on they, she explains it. But at this point, that's all she says. Of course, I had no idea I'd gross Cody out with my nachos. I was an overweight kid who liked junk food a little too much. Of all the junk foods in the world, chili cheese nachos were my favorite. Period. End of paragraph. Only two sentences long, and we're moving on. I have so many questions. I have so many questions. Okay. When we finally got to the ranch, Cody transformed into a hero. He was a total stud. All the girls on the trip watched him with their mouths wide open, myself included. I'd seen Cody in action back in Utah. I'd seen him display his talents in church. And I'd seen how he transformed himself into the life of every party. But now I was seeing a whole new side of him. Cody was a complete cowboy. At the ranch, he was instantly in his element. He got right in there and wrangled cows. He worked the fields. He shoveled and cleaned and got down and dirty with all the animals. I was totally impressed. I thought Cody was the coolest guy in the world. When I got back home, I was gushing about Cody to a friend. She knew I wanted to be a third wife, so we came up with a plan. <laughs> She'd marry Cody first and be his second wife. A few months later, I would join them as a third wife. I took this plan much more seriously than my friend who eventually got married to another man. 
My visit to Wyoming had made a fantastic impression on me, and I was eager to return. I had become very close to Cody's sister, so when she invited me to spend the summer with her at the Browns Ranch, I accepted immediately. While I was living with the Browns, a local family started to express their interest in our faith. They had a daughter who, on one visit, spotted a picture of Cody. The minute I saw her look at it, I knew she'd be interested in him. I felt very threatened by her. She was beautiful and thin, and I was immediately afraid she'd catch Cody's eye. A few months after I met her, this girl was invited to come to an event in Utah for the younger members of our faith. I'm dying to know if this is a girl that he proposed to and then broke it off the week of the marriage. All right. Since I was going down, it fell to me to drive her and to introduce her to some of my friends. Not doing so would have appeared selfish. I drove the new girl, apparently begrudgingly, and her brothers to Utah. The whole ride down, I kept saying to myself, what are you doing, you idiot? (laughs) I was completely threatened by her. When I got to the youth event, I immediately realized that all my fears were well-founded. Right away, Cody and Mary took particular notice of her. Their interest was overwhelming and undeniable. My goodness, I did not know this story. Okay. I was heartbroken and jealous, tortured by the fact that Cody seemed to find her more attractive than me. To make things worse, she and Mary hit it off immediately. They became inseparable, instantaneous best friends. One morning after, I mean, we saw how that worked out with Robin, though, right? One morning after I returned from the ranch, Cody and Mary came to pick me up. We made plans to spend the day together in the city. Before we left, we lingered on the porch of my parents' house. Cody and Mary had strange looks on their faces. They seemed excited, but a little nervous. Then they told me, that they were courting the girl I introduced them to at the youth conference. I was devastated. It ruined my day. In fact, it ruined my year. Wow. Okay. I decided then and there that I was not going to marry Cody, no matter what happened. It wasn't because of Cody. It was because of the girl he and Mary were courting. She was too young and too cute, and I just couldn't see her in my future. I broke off the friendship. I couldn't be around Cody and Mary while they were courting someone else. Wow, she was serious. She couldn't even be, I mean, I guess it. She was kind of in love with Cody. But still, that's intense. You think she did it like like a brat? Or did she just say, I just don't want to be around you anymore because I'm not fond of that girl? I wonder. Cody and Mary's news, well, we'll find out from Cody. If she was really mean about it, he'll he'll let us know. <laughs> Cody and Mary's news was not the most devastating blow I received that year. Not by a long shot. A few months after I returned to Utah, my parents told me they were getting a divorce. Oh. Even worse, my mother had decided to leave our faith, which felt like the worst kind of abandonment. Hmm. I was stunned and inconsolable. I felt as if my world was disintegrating. I'd seen no signs of trouble between my parents, and I couldn't imagine a life in which we would no longer be a cohesive family. I completely shut down. I didn't want anything to do with any of my old friends. I couldn't bear associating with people in Cody's circle or people who had known my family when it was intact. I turned inward. I told my father that I wasn't interested in dating, and that if a boy approached him and expressed interest in me, I didn't want to know about it. I was so shaken by my parents' divorce that I wanted to make sure I was solid in my faith before I committed myself to someone else. Naturally, I questioned the whole concept of marriage. If my parents couldn't sustain their relationship, what chance do I have when the time came? Even though I'd cut myself off from a lot of my friends, Mary and I still talked on the phone from time to time. Okay. Okay. 
So it sounds like, Christine, it wasn't like a direct impact on, uh, uh, okay. It wasn't my chat just froze there for a second. I'm like, I saw that before. Oh, yeah, there's even a super chat in here. I didn't see. I'm so sorry. My thing just froze for some reason. I'm like, I saw that comment a while ago. Is there nobody left here? <laughs> Am I talking to myself? <laughs> So nobody in chat, Dee Dee, thank you for the super chat. It's your first super chat on a live stream. That's awesome. I appreciate it. And I'm honored. Thank you very much, Dee Dee. Appreciate you. Okay. Oh, and Lori, thank you too. How sweet of you, Lori. Okay. Um, remember this past season when Christine talked about her happy childhood and the divorce was shocking to her? Yeah. Hmm. Mm -hmm. So it looks like she cut off everybody and everything. Like she just really struggled with the whole thing. And, but for some reason, her and Mary were still close. It did not seem like Mary liked her at all. Mary still talked to her on the phone from time to time. I wonder who initiated those phone calls, don't you? I don't think Christine would have reached out to Mary. So maybe Mary reached out to her. Do you think Cody made Mary reach out to her? because he's still kind of in the back of his mind, was interested in having her be part of their um, marriage because of the royalty that she was. Okay, HP, I'm glad you're still here. I'm glad I'm not all alone. <laughs> the chat's moving again, so I just had to click on it. I don't know why it, it froze on my screen. Okay. Um, okay. Mary Stone and I talk from time to time. I resisted these phone calls. Hmm because I didn't want to hear about the courtship. It had been prolonged because Cody and Mary wanted to wait for the girl they were courting to turn 18 before making their engagement official. Wow. He was dating, he was courting a girl who was 17. Even though I wanted nothing to do with it, I heard when they got engaged and I knew when they set the date for the wedding. Wow. Okay. A week before the wedding, I received a phone call. I was standing in the kitchen when I answered the phone. It was Mary on the other end of the line. My heart nearly exploded with joy when Mary explained that the wedding had been called off. It was the happiest day of my life. I felt as if I could re-enter the world again. I immediately welcomed Cody and Mary back. So you think Mary called her just to tell her the wedding's off, we're not going to get married anymore, so we can be friends again? Do you think Cody made her make the call again? I don't know. I just can't see Mary initiating all of this, unless she really just didn't have any other friends. All right. Christine goes on, but my happiness was short-lived. One day, completely out of the blue, Cody called me up. Christine, he said. Janelle is driving me crazy. I can't stand it. She really frustrates me. Who is Janelle? I said. I had no idea who he was talking about. You know her, Cody said. You met her here and there. I had no idea why Cody was bringing this problem to me. Anyway, there was a simple solution. If this woman, Janelle was making Cody crazy, wouldn't the easiest thing to do to wouldn't the easiest thing to do be to stop associating with her? It's an interesting sentence. How wrong I was. The next thing I knew, he and Mary had married Janelle. Oh my gosh. Why was Janelle driving him crazy? Was she telling him to be financially and uh, fiscally responsible? <laughs> what what can Janelle do to drive anybody crazy? She's such a people pleaser. And she's got such a meek and mild disposition. I don't understand. And then he randomly complained to her. And then they got engaged. This is the craziest. There's no continuity in these stories. There's so many pieces missing. It's ridiculous. Okay. 
The next thing I knew, he and Mary had married Janelle. Of course, I thought this was really weird because Cody had told me that she was driving him crazy. It took me a while to realize what kind of crazy Cody had meant. Oh. <laughs> I really should read on before I comment in this, don't I? <laughs> After Janelle joined their family, they moved to Wyoming. I had just let Cody and Mary back into my life, and now they had moved away with another wife. I hadn't just lost a man who was special to me. I lost my best friends. Well, Janelle's not one of her best friends. Maybe one of her best friends, which was Mary, right? Because they're not... Um, she didn't even know who Janelle was. So what she's implying is that she, when he said she's driving me crazy, it was like in the, I need to have her. Is, it, is that what that means? I realized what kind of crazy Cody meant. So he was like crazy in love with Janelle. Is that what we're supposed to figure out here? Let me know if I'm way off track, but that's how I'm reading it. And then they got married and moved away. All right. Janelle was never meek and mild. What do you mean Janelle was never meek and mild? She's always meek and mild. No, that's how I interpret her. I mean, she's gotten a backbone over the years, but she always seems like just sort of, it's all good. And going along with the, I don't know. We can all see her differently, I suppose. Uh, oh, Frosty Pop, thank you for the super chat. So happy in this group. Great snark, my people. <laughs> yes. Oh, uh, let me like that too. I think it went away. There we go. I just realized I should like the super chats. Uh, I don't know where the other one is. Oh, there's so much writing in here. You guys are chatting, 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 chatting. Maybe I can do it before I log off so that you all don't just sit here and wait while I try and find it it's um my pop-out chat that i have is very interesting because there's big sections of text where all of a sudden are highlighted in yellow and i don't know why i don't understand it so it's hard for me to scroll and see there's Dee Dee's frosty pop oh. All right, I know there's another one in there. I'll like it later. Okay, we're back to Cody now. After I married Janelle, we traveled down to Utah for a weekend to visit Mary's parents. While we were there, we invited Christine over for dinner. I was used to the gregarious, bubbly Christine, but when she showed up that evening, I immediately sensed an underlying sadness and turmoil within her. It made me sad to see her struggling. On her way out the door, I pulled her aside. We stepped out on the porch so we could chat. Then I asked her what was wrong. Nothing. Everything's fine, she said. <laughs> kind of sounds like Christine, right? I knew she wasn't telling the truth, and I told her so. Yes, communication is not not a, a, a forefront of this family. No, definitely not a strength. I insisted that she tell me what was going on. She was my friend. I loved her and I needed to know what was breaking her heart. It's my parents' divorce, she said. The admission opened up the floodgates and suddenly Christine felt that she could be open and honest with me once more. I felt the old spark that had always been between us ignite again. I know you, Christine, I said. This ordeal may help you in the future. It will make you stronger and more self-aware. And one day, you're going to marry a man who's going to appreciate that you've been through something like this and that you survived it. I didn't tell her at the time, but I had a feeling that man she would marry was going to be me. Um, Can we just pause for a second and talk about her dad now I know the grandfather was the whole head of the church and then he was assassinated and I think his brother one of his brothers took over so I think I misspoke on a bunch of my videos I think I said that her dad was for a period of time also 
a leader in their church. But there's no mention of that here, at least not now. So do any of you know, was her father actually a leader as well? I think I shared that information in a video. Not that the video was about that at all, but I'm, I'm pretty sure I said that at one point, and I don't know if I misspoke, because there's no talk about her father. It seems like that would be a significant thing for her to mention in terms of the divorce, that like, here's my dad is a leader in the church. Like, I felt like I heard, <laughs> now tell me if I'm crazy, and I could be crazy. I thought I heard that her father was a leader in the church, and he actually stepped down shortly before the divorce, because... That wasn't like in line with the doctrine of the church. Hmm. I'll try to glance up every now and then and look. I know my chat is behind me talking live. Okay. So I find it interesting that he was repulsed with her. And that he lost all the spark. And now all of a sudden he thought he was going to marry her again. I don't know. And you know what? There's no conversation about why he broke it off with the 17-year-old. Wait a second. Did he say he broke it off? Because isn't she the one that everyone said that the parents intervened and said you're not marrying him? Which would make sense. They're kind of new to this whole church. So I could see that their first daughter when she becomes a tender age of 17, doesn't want to marry this man who's got another wife yet. Like, I, I could see that. Um, um, she drove the girl. They were courting the girl. Then there's a divorce. She cut herself off from her friends. A week before the wedding, I received a phone call. I was standing in the kitchen when I answered the phone. It was Mary on the other end of the line. My heart nearly exploded with joy when Mary explained that the wedding had been called off. That's it. The wedding had been called off. So the book doesn't say it all. How do we know? Is this like a Reddit thread where somebody knew the family and so they shared? How do, how do we know that it was the, the family of the daughter or the young girl who ca called it off? I guess if they would have called it off, they, they would have just said that in the book. <laughs> okay. Let's go on. I just had to get that straight in my mind because my mind is so full of sister wives facts, but not in a chronological fashion. So sometimes I misspeak. I'm sorry. I'll blame some of it on my seniority. <laughs> I'll just like, every time I screw up, I'll just go, senior brain, forgive me. It says it right in my per <laughs> description. Senior perspective. <laughs> Can't expect it to make sense. I'm a Cody. Okay, Cody's turn. Um, didn't he blame Christine for running that woman away? Yes, Scarlett. I think that's the reference. No, no. He was referencing in like season 18 when in the talking head when he was really upset. He was talking about somebody. Oh, yeah, that would be her between Mary and Janelle. Yeah. Okay. And said it was Christine's fault because she didn't, she wouldn't join the family if he married her. So he had to have loved Christine so much that he broke it off with this girl. Okay. Or the girl just broke it off and he blames Christine for having the girl run away. I don't know. There's a whole book in that whole conversation why do these peripheral people not write books do they not know they can retire as millionaires like robin's ex-husband 
or Robin's ex-husband's sister or mother or, you know, like somebody who's close to it all, who's seen it all, who knows it all. This girl or her parents, the details and information that they have that's not out there, they could make a boatload of money and make the rest of us very happy to fill in all the blanks. If you're listening, (laughs) I know you're not. Anyway, let's go on. Cody's turn. What time is it? Oh, I'm so sorry. Let's keep going. How much do we have left here? It's a long chapter. Cody. After I married Janelle, we traveled down to Utah for a weekend to visit Mary's parents. While we were there, we invited Christine over for dinner. Okay. Oh, I read all this. I digressed because I was shocked at how he said, I knew I was going to marry Christine. It's just like, follow the bouncing ball. He says one thing, then he says something else, and he says one thing, then he says something else. Okay. Christine. Cody really knew how to break my heart when he told me that one day I'd marry a man who'd appreciate my strength. I was distraught. It seemed that he was implying that he was not going to be that man in my future. Even though I was devastated, I was still more than a little smitten. That night when Cody left, I stood at the door to Mary's parents' house and said goodbye. It's not goodbye, Cody said. It's au revoir. (laughs) That sounds very Cody. (laughs) Even though Cody's line was cheesy, it sent a current of electricity down my spine. He was flirting with me. Cody shut the door and walked down the steps with Mary toward their car, leaving me inside. Mary's family immediately sensed what had passed between Cody and me. They all gave me knowing looks. Their faces were warm and inviting, as if they were giving me and Cody their approval. Mary's family's encouragement was too much for me. I believe I gave a small fist pump of joy, then swooned on the couch. (laughs) I have always been a little dramatic. I was just going to say, dramatic lately? All right. I knew that no matter what he said, Cody was still the one for me. A few months later, Cody and Mary came down to Utah for a New Year's ball at our church. With dancing, I'm sure. Cody asked me to dance (laughs) over and over and over. I was giddy and could barely keep my feet on the floor. It was the best night of my life. I felt as if I was glittering and glowing. Right after New Year's, I got a phone call from Mary saying that she was planning a surprise party for Cody in Wyoming. She wanted to know if I would bring a group of friends up from Utah. Naturally, I was delighted. I simply couldn't wait to see Cody again. When Cody walked into the room for his surprise party, and saw a bunch of us gathered there, his eyes locked on mine. I knew then how he felt. It gave me courage. The next day, we found ourselves alone for the first time. We were sitting on the couch, and I just came out with, of all the guys I know, you are the one I'd want to marry. I was proud of myself for being so forthcoming and honest. Mary's sister Teresa and I drove back to Utah that night. We giggled, we giggled, the entire ride about my future with Cody. When I got back home, I immediately approached my grandfather, who was the head of our church. Should, co- oh, he was still alive? Okay, so this is why her grandfather was still the head of the church. So this is why her father wasn't involved at all. Okay, I, I'm answering my own questions here. All right. <laughs> Sorry, Godmother, that's funny. Okay. I immediately approached my grandfather, who was the head of our church. Should Cody Brown ask, I said, tell him the answer is yes. Let him know that I definitely want to be part of his family. Cody writes, Christine made it really easy for me to get permission to court her. When I called her dad, he was thrilled. This is great, Cody, this is great, he said. It was exactly what he'd been hoping for. Christine's father was aware of how she glowed when we were together. Okay. He was also aware of how 
she had pushed all other boys to the sidelines in favor of me. He wanted her to be happy, and now he knew that she made me happy. Christine just loves you, his father, her father said. His only question for me was regarding my loyalty to our church. In his mind, this single question determines worthiness. Since the day I converted, my faith had never wavered, not for a single second. I told him that, and he was convinced. On Valentine's Day, I asked Mary's sister, Teresa, who lived in Utah near Christine, to buy a bouquet of roses. I instructed her to write, Let's get the ball rolling. What? I mean, did you know that? Let's get the ball rolling. Okay. Teresa offered to deliver the roses to Christine at work. Christine was a title clerk at a car dealership. Oh, interesting. The whole office knew that she that she was from a polygamous family. In fact, they knew that she had a crush on me, a man with two wives. It's a testament to Christine's outgoing nature and wonderful personality that people do not judge her for her beliefs. Huh. That's an interesting comment. If you have an outgoing nature and a wonderful personality, people aren't going to judge you. Yet Cody was so worried about being judged when he came out into public. <laughs> so I guess he knew he didn't have an outgoing, well, he did have an outgoing nature, but maybe not a wonderful personality. Okay. All right, let's see here. I'm going to keep reading. I need to bring the bucket out from under my cloak. Yes, please feel free to vomit as I continue to read through the rest of this chapter. It's insane. It turns out that the day I asked Teresa to send Christine flowers, Christine had called in sick to work. (laughs) Should have been a sign. But by some wonderful coincidence, she had called Teresa to tell her that she was unwell and would be staying home. So Teresa knew where to deliver the roses. That night, I called Christine. We were both overjoyed and a little giddy. The following weekend, Janelle and I traveled down to Utah. Janelle generously offered to hang out with some people in our church so that I could have some time alone with Christine. Janelle was very sweet and accepting of my courtship with Christine. I knew that things were difficult between her and Mary in the house, and I believed she was hoping for a new sister wife to be her ally and friend. Um, okay, so we don't talk about how Janelle got along really with Mary in relation to Janelle divorcing Mary's brother, or... According to how it was written in the book, he left her, but maybe he just left the home physically, but she was, I just have a lot of questions. I have a lot of questions. But could that be why they didn't get along? I mean, would make sense if Mary loved her brother. But then it sounded like the brother was kind of not so great, right? Like, didn't he leave the church? He wasn't really involved in the church. He wasn't really involved in the family. Like, she stayed very close with his whole family, but not him. Okay, Susan Joyce, this is torture. Not sure I can last to the end of the chapter. It is insane. It's insane. I just keep going because I'm trying to make sense of this. I'm trying to like put it in logical order in my brain. And I come up with probably more questions than I do answers. Okay. Mary was slightly more prickly when I started courting Christine. However... She liked Christine and was aware of how close the two of us were. I'm sure, as far as Mary was concerned, bringing Christine into the family was just a matter of time. Why was she prickly? Was she prickly because she wasn't getting along with Janelle? Or was she prickly because, according to this book, she never liked Christine, really? Like, they were friends, but she had zero interest in bringing her in as a wife. She did not like her and the connection with Cody. So if she's still prickly, he just went ahead anyway and did it? Well, no wonder the two of them never got along. Okay, Christine and I spent as much time together as possible that weekend. It wasn't what I'd call romantic. 
Christine was quite puritanical in her view of romance and courtship, but we had fun. Now, like puritanical, what? Like, so she wouldn't like do things in the car with you or something? I mean, like, it, does he mean romance is sexual? And this man, his head is all messed up. Why couldn't he be romantic with her? Even if she is, you can be romantic with somebody who's puritanical. I mean, just the flirting, that's romantic. He's an idiot. All right. Let's see. Mary was prickly because she never really wanted to do polygamy. She did it out of obedience. I believe that. I believe that. And she didn't seem to be thrilled really with anybody except for that one young girl and Robin and neither of those worked out hmm okay let's see I think we held hands and maybe hugged once or twice but that was the extent of it that weekend we got engaged this is just this is just a bizarre faith. I mean, like, I mean, I, how do you try to wrap your head around something that's this crazy different? I mean, like, it, I'm trying to make sense out of something that's never going to make sense. I wanted to prolong our engagement, but Christine didn't want to. She insisted on setting a wedding date as quickly as possible. She believed that a long courtship would be inappropriate and unfair on her new sister wives. She didn't want to be running around with a married man. I tried telling her that I wasn't quite ready. Then why did you propose? Why are we not just... I, I don't understand. He... It's like... I feel like Cody plays more games than women do. You know? There have been so many situations where he's like, I felt like this, but then I did this, but then I felt like this, but then I did this, and then I did this, but I felt like this. Like everything is, it's a game. He's playing, like, he's very much like high school girl play games with the boys mentality. Okay, I'm going on. Sorry, I'll get off my pedestal. All right. Um... Let's see. Try Stop trying to make sense out of it. You're right. You're right. Right. It'll drive you crazy. I have to think this way at my day job. Nothing makes sense for the last four years there, and I drove myself nuts. Yeah. That, I told you last time I was reading, I'm reading a book called uh, Unoffendable, and it says the same thing. When somebody shocks you with something, why are you shocked if they've been doing this kind of behavior their whole life? Like, if he's been, we've seen that he's, well, I don't know if loser's the right word. <laughs> like, he's inconsistent. He makes no sense. He's all over the place. And so why am I surprised? Okay. Christine felt that she'd already waited so long because we had been friends for three years. We decided to get married in six weeks. Whoa, that's fast. Okay. The minute I asked Christine to marry me, you know what, Christine, I blame you for this. If your fiancé has got cold feet, you don't rush into a marriage. You let him work through it because it's not going to work out well in the end. As we saw. The minute I asked Christine to marry me, I realized that I had once again acted too quickly. I was in over my head. I was not even 25. I already had two wives, and Janelle was expecting our first child. The thought of trying to bring Christine into our family gave me serious pause. I'm afraid I showed up at our wedding with what Christine calls a thousand-yard stare. Mm, how sad. Suddenly, I felt the weight of the world on my shoulders. I was nervous and apprehensive. I knew there was a lot about my life that Christine didn't understand. She had only ever seen me as the life of the party and the good time guy. <laughs> good time guy. <laughs> so say you. Okay. She didn't know how tense things were between Mary and Janelle. Why didn't you tell her? My gosh, the communication in this family is insane. Non-existent. Oh, boy, she didn't know these two aren't getting along, but I'm marrying her anyway and bringing her in. We're not going to tell her about it. 
Okay. I'm going to open the door. I think my husband is going to, my husband is, normally he goes to sleep really early because he's a school teacher at high school and he rides a bike and it takes him an hour to ride to work every day. So he's like out of the house by 530 in the morning, but it's spring break. So I kept the door closed because I knew they could play with him, but I hear a lot of commotion out there. So just give me one second to crack the door open. Okay. He was in the other room watching TV, so I didn't want to bother him with my sister wives chat. Okay. So anyway, so we know he makes no sense here. He doesn't tell her about the fact that the other two wives aren't getting along. <sighs> and oh, shoot, when I put the book down, I think it Oh, okay, now here we go. Uh, she didn't know how tense things were with Mary and Janelle and hadn't had much opportunity to get to know them herself. What are you talking about? She's been like taking trips, going on camping excursions, wild outdoor trekking <laughs> adventures, staying up in the... What do you mean she didn't get to know? She knew Mary. I mean, Janelle, I get, but Mary. All right, that makes no sense. When I proposed, I was working at a job that was crushing my soul. Mary and Janelle were miserable with each other, and I didn't know how to negotiate a truce between them. And now I was introducing a third wife into an unstable environment. I had no doubt that Christine was the right person, but I sensed it was too early to marry her. All of this was running through my head as I joined Christine in marriage. What a guy. All right. What I didn't know then was that Christine would become a major factor in the success of our family. Her kindness and her positive nature brokered a peace in our household. Christine saved our bacon, as I like to say. Okay. You say it. Never heard it before, but maybe it's a saying. She saved the Browns. But back then, all I could see were the struggles that lay ahead. What? So she comes in and makes everything good, and all he could see was struggle ahead? Why? Why? That makes no sense. Makes no sense. Sorry. I call foul. I don't believe that. Don't believe it. Okay. Um, we're getting close to the end here, people. Believe it or not. I worked right up to the day we got married. I even had a hard time getting off work to attend my own wedding. <laughs> yeah, I don't think there's any employer in the world that would not give you your wedding day off work. <laughs> Come on. Christine had to organize the whole wedding herself. Neither my father nor Christine's mother attended the ceremony. It was a hard day for us. I didn't have time to plan a honeymoon. In fact... Didn't even occur to me to plan one. <laughs> we have no talk about Janelle's honeymoon, do we? Or did we? Yeah, 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 it was a road trip. Yeah, yeah, yeah. An unplanned, they didn't have any plans where they were going. Mary's was the most planned. They had a destination, but they didn't have places to stay along the way planned. And Janelle's was, where was she going? But it was less planned. So this one was no plan, no plan whatsoever. No one told me that I should. <sighs> Is there no common sense in your head, Mr. Cody Brown? You've been married twice and you're pleading ignorance that you didn't know you needed to plan a honeymoon? Come on. That's the biggest line of bull so far. Liar. Flat out lie. When, I mean, maybe no one did tell him he should because everyone knew that you, he knew he should. He's been married twice. I can't even. Okay, let's go on. When I wasn't buried in my work, I was a ping pong ball bouncing between two wives who always had their bristles up. Obviously, they weren't in in interested in advising me on what I should do with Christine. Why did they have to advise you on what to do with Christine? You did it twice before. I, I, okay. 
After our wedding, Christine and I got in the car and drove to Montana. It was a tense trip, and I have to admit that I wasn't my most cheerful self. Christine and I had gone from being buddies to being married. We hadn't had time to get used to each other, and I hadn't prepared myself for the transition of adding a new wife to my family. Then what, was he just a pussy that he couldn't like man up and say, no, I'm not going to get married to you right now. I don't understand why he blames Christine. There's two people in this. She didn't force you to go to the altar. You clearly didn't want to be there. You should have just... I, he can't speak up. I don't know why he can't speak his mind, this man. I don't understand. Some There's there's more to it. Don't know what it is. More to it. Okay. Uh, save the bacon. It is a... It is a... It is a... It is a comment. Okay. I never heard it before. Okay, this is the end. The last paragraph is Christine. I was shaken when Cody showed up at her wedding with that look on his face. Oh, this is going to get really sad. I mean, it's kind of already sad, but now mm, it's her wedding day. He was morose. I was even more devastated when I learned that he hadn't planned a honeymoon. I mean, why didn't Christine plan a honeymoon? I would never in a million years expect my husband to plan the honeymoon. <laughs> I'm sorry. Or any vacation. I don't know that that's completely on Cody. Unless that's a cultural thing. But it can't be a cultural thing because he had two weddings before. He didn't really plan honeymoons for them either. But I, okay, I don't know. I don't know. Let's go on. So many questions. So many questions. I was hoping that we'd finally have a romantic getaway, something special that told me how thrilled he was to have me in the family. I was young and naive. I had no idea how to tell Cody what I wanted from him. If I suddenly turn around and scream, don't be alarmed. I can hear my cats and they're starting to scratch that couch behind me, which they're not allowed to do. But it stopped. So if it happens again, I'm going to clap my hands and say, no. <laughs> okay. I'm warning you in advance. I'll be turned around so it won't be loud. <sighs> okay. Just so you think I'm not like having a seizure or something. <laughs> I'm fine. Hopefully it won't happen. They'll be good. Cosette, Chubbs, be good. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. I learned he hadn't planned a honeymoon. I was hoping that we'd finally have a romantic getaway, something special that told me how thrilled he was to have me and his family. I was young and naive. I had no idea how to tell Cody what I wanted from him. Mm. On our honeymoon, a drive through the sticks of Montana. <laughs> Horrible. I was struck by the realization that I didn't know Cody very well. Once we got into the car... He still had the faraway look on his face that I'd seen at our wedding. I mean, come on, Cody. Man up. Just try. It's your honeymoon. He seemed distant and unreachable. I began to understand that he felt overwhelmed. However, I didn't know how to talk to him about what he was feeling. I had no idea how to reach out to him. I just sat there in silence. Watching him drive with that look on his face made me unbearably sad. <laughs> This is sad. I realized that I had no idea how to express my feelings with him or ask him to share his with me. I never doubted that Cody was the man of my dreams, but I began to worry that I'd marry him too soon. Uh. I mean, he went along with it too. That's all I can say. But yes, it was too soon. And no, you shouldn't have pushed him to marry you in six weeks. But, you know, there's two tangling in this. You're both wrong. Until our honeymoon, I had thought he was a fun-loving guy, but that was the extent of it. Now there was this distant, grumpy man by my side. Ooh, she saw the grumpy side right on the honeymoon. The grumpy side we've seen like in the last two to three seasons. He never showed it on camera before. Got another video on that, on how McKelty and Cody just sort of faked it till they made it at the beginning of uh, the series. 
Um, okay. Burdened by something I couldn't understand. And I worried that I might be the source of his anxiety. Like many young women, I had idealized marriage. I had this silly notion that the moment you got married, your problems ended. I was fixated on the idea of happily ever after. I thought marriage, especially plural marriage, would be absolute bliss. What could be better than being blessed with a husband and sisters in one fell swoop? I didn't understand that marriage is something you must work on. I didn't know that true love isn't instantaneous, but something that develops over time. While Cody and I did love each other, it took us about a year from the day we married to fall completely head over heels for each other. It would be a hard year, but well worth the wait. Mm. A year. Wow. I will say what I find interesting. Cody has been, he has contradicted himself on this. But I'm surprised how this church does not prepare. I mean, just look at a a standard Christian church. Now, I mean, there's a bunch of different denominations, but most just basic Bible-following, non-denominational Christian churches encourage all their couples to go through a marriage counseling ahead of time. They do personality quizzes. They do, you know, all these different questionnaires. They look to see what the love languages are. You know, like they, the pastor goes through all of this so that they can start to see. And I remember with my daughter it being mapped out, like these are going to be the top three areas. You guys are going to have conflict in your marriage because this is where you're very, very different. And here are the three that you line up the most, that you're going to have the most harmony in your marriage. So this is what you need to work towards but don't be surprised when you have difficulties in the area and knowing that here are steps you can take to start to talk through things and all that prior to marriage okay so now we get to a church where you're marrying more than one wife and they don't have anything like that in there everybody seems to be shocked that polygamy is difficult (laughs) and cody admitted at one point I think it was on the Mormonism live things that everyone in the church gives the appearance that it's all wonderful so that everybody comes to the church and, and stays in the church, but they don't do any counseling of any sort. On the flip side, let me just say, in answer to another question, probably an hour into the interview, he said that he was disappointed that his AUB church was so focused on preaching and talking and promoting polygamy that there really wasn't a big emphasis on salvation and Jesus and scripture and the Bible. It was more about uh, polygamy. So I don't know what about polygamy they're talking about if they're not trying to talk about how to make it work and how to be a success in it. I, I mean, you think that would be what they tried to preach from the pulpit? Like, we want you all to stay married, so let's give you some tools to do that. I don't know. I don't know. It seems shocking to me that everybody that enters polygamy is shocked that this seems to be a difficult thing. She had a rough first year. She had a rough last year with him too. Okay, grouse are delicious. There is a whole conversation going on here that I'm on. Hold on. No. And you get down. Get down. Get down. You don't belong on the couch. Oh, you're being so bad. You know you don't sit on that couch. Sorry about that, people. You see me discipline the young ones. Um, okay. It, well, that's an interesting way to put it, Joanna. In the church, it's about stacking bodies to get celestial, <laughs> to celestial Legoland. <laughs> All right, lots of talk about pheasant and grouse. Apparently, somebody likes shooting, goes uh, bird hunting. Um... Looks good, looks good. Yeah, she sounds naive. Mm hmm. He had one jump on my car at campsite, stayed for an hour watching us pack up. Frosty Pop. Is this, is this campsite? Is this related to the grouse hunting? 
I'm going to have to go back and rewatch this whole chat. Scarlet, your husband planned the home honeymoon? Good for you. Not me. That would not be. Although I also married a man who is not really fond of travel and going different places. He's very much a homebody. So this is his week of spring break and my week of spring break with my kids. We could have traveled somewhere, but we didn't. It's okay. I didn't think about it. <laughs> I may have forced him to do it. No, actually, we had so many doctor's appointments this week. We couldn't have gone anywhere. <laughs> Getting old. <laughs> He's also one of those teachers that refuses to ever take a day off of work. So getting him in to see a doctor is difficult. All right. All right. I think I'm pretty much caught up. But I'm going to go back and reread everything and figure out why we're talking about um, pheasants and grouse. <laughs> All right. More talk about the. This is. You guys are making me. <laughs> I drove all around with my mom looking for a prom gown being a pheasant on the grill of my car. Oh, so funny. No to the cats. That's right, Purple. Purple, hello. I haven't seen you in here. That's the first time I saw your name. Um, yeah, they they scampered off. They took me seriously. I must have had a, a very serious voice. They know better. They do it because I'm facing this way. They're just like children. All right, that's it for today. We will be back next Thursday again at 8 p.m., I'm trying to think if there's any other real updates. I don't think there are. So I'll try to get a video or two out in between then. Highly recommend again. Go to real. Hey, do me a favor. Even if you don't watch Seeking Sister Wives, just go to Reality TV Breakdown and just subscribe. Watch something while you're cooking or whatever. Just so it helps the channel. I'd love to eventually get the channel to be monetized. Um, I have this. I have the subscriber number. Actually, I don't even need subscribers per se. I just need view. I need hours of watch time on it. So go check it out. You might be interested in uh, some of them. I think, honest to God, if you're here this long in this chat and you made it to the very end, y'all are going to like Seeking Sister Wives. You are. You are. 100%. This was fun, Mama Squirrel. Um, Sherry for Canada, you are welcome. Very good. It's your bedtime, Mace Chill. Mine too. It's past my bedtime, really. Hey, I have a, do have a quick question. You throw pillows at your cats. I do sometimes too, but the pillows are all over there. <laughs> By the time I go to get the pillow, the cat's gone because it thinks I'm going to be like clapping in, a, in their face. Um, do we want to bump this up to 7 o'clock or do we want to leave it at 8 o'clock? This is Eastern Standard Time. So is this a good time when we start it or should we start starting it an hour earlier? Because I do know some people, it gets late, all the East Coasters, and they have to dip out a little bit early but then I also worry about the west coasters not being able to start an hour earlier because of work or whatnot so um, leave a comment in the description below you can keep leaving it in the chat I think it still continues to go even after I um, log off for a little bit I don't know why I don't know what when it officially stops but um, if you don't get a chance to leave a comment when you see it posted which it'll get posted in like 24 hours leave it in the comment and let me know if this is a good time, if you like this 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, or if you want to bump it up and start at 7 p.m. Um, Eastern Standard Time, so it would end at 9 instead of 10. Okay? All right. Love to chat. Thank you, Scarlett. I'm glad to have you in here, too. You're always delightful. Thank you to all. We're going to stop streaming, and I will see you for our Cloak of Charity Chapter 4 Book Club next Thursday night at, we'll see what time. I'll start taking a consensus. Maybe I'll even do a poll in my community tab. Um, but we'll see you next Thursday night. Bye to everybody.